the settled on two. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I tell you what, this is harder than what you're actually thinking of. Yes. Trying to think of something like this because yeah, if I think that, that, yeah, when I think that like people really hate it, and then you think, no, no, they actually quite enjoy it. You're like, oh damn right, I've got to think of something else. So this has been tough. I think I, I think I've nailed it down though. I think I've got a couple that. Yeah. Well, and even if, if, even if, if all four of us were here, um, yeah, the, the other three don't necessarily have to hate it as long as as long as you got at least one or two of those people to argue with you. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. Then yeah. you can partner up with somebody that can jump in there with you and say, "Yeah, man, this is what you're trying to say about it." You know what I mean? It can turn into a real conversation. Yeah. Right, right. Bully someone into loving your movie. <laughs> <laughs> you're not bully, you're never bully that shit. It's like you're gonna like it, but you're not getting off the damn screen. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> One way or the other. <laughs> you're the rest of the fucking night, yeah. Uh, right. What, 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 what two films did you pick, Dave? Well, okay. The two absolute extremes, by the way. Okay. So, so I've got a horror one. And the reason why I picked this one, it's not necessarily that I absolutely love it. But I've been in this situation that we're talking about. It's a film that I absolutely hated for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. And I revisited it about, I think, a couple of years ago for my channel to do a review. And I'd grown a new appreciation for this movie. And I've ended up watching it again a couple of times, and I've actually found myself like thinking, this could actually be one of my favorites. And if I could go back to my reviews and actually do my ranking again, I would probably put this a lot higher now. That so, so my favorite film. Yes. Yeah. That's my window. Hey guys, how is it all going? So, thank you so much for joining me for what is Evil Dead 2, Dead by Dawn, movie review. And if you're still around after that really poor opening <laughs> that I put into this review, thank you so much. Hey, it made me chuckle, so it stays in. <laughs> so, to get into the quick plot of Evil Dead 2 is, Ash, for some reason, goes back to the cabin with a girlfriend. You'll find out why later on. But he goes back to the cabin anyway. And lo and behold, what does he find? He finds a recording and he finds the book of the dead. So what do you naturally do when you find something like that? You press play on the recording and let it just play out. Shouldn't really do that because then deadites will rise and make your life a living hell. But what the deadites don't realise is they are making a hero that will end them once and for all. Because he's a prophecy, he's in the book, he is Ash friggin' Williams. And you don't want to mess with Ash Williams. Now, I am just going to say this straight away. Evil Dead 2 is one of my favourite movies ever. Forget just horror, ever. If I was to do a top 10 of my favourite movies of all time, Evil Dead 2 would be there somewhere. Now, I don't know whether it would be in my top five. It might sneak in. I'm not going to lie. It might sneak in. But it's definitely, definitely in my top ten. I absolutely love this movie. Flaws and all. I do not care. I have seen this film hundreds and hundreds of times. And every time I watch this movie... It just still gives me so much joy. And there's one main reason for that. And that is Bruce Campbell as Ash Williams. Now, before I dive into that, I will give the reason why Ash Williams go back to the cabin. Evil Dead 2 is basically a retread, reboot, remake, whatever you want to call it, of the first movie. Some people kind of think it is connected to the first one. They've just kind of remade it a little bit for the beginning of the movie. And then obviously when the uh, when the evil comes and gets Ashley Williams at the end of the first one. That same scene technically is in the second one. 
and continues on. So my, most fans like to put them two connections together from the first movie and second movie, and then we carry on, which is fair enough. But I just take it as it's just it's a retread. It's just it's a redoing of the second one. And the up the violence, if that was even possible. The up the gore, if that was even possible. The up the blood. There is so much blood in this movie. It wouldn't be an Evil Dead movie without blood, would it? Let's be honest with you. And they more focus on the character of Ash Williams now. Ash Williams is on the Mount Rushmore of horror characters. And I think I've said this before. If not top. Ash Williams is one of my favourite characters in movie history ever. Like up there with Indiana Jones, Batman, John Wick. Man, I didn't even put down to Washington's uh, Robert McCall. And, you know what I mean? I just love these movies. But he, Rowdy Roddy Piper in Day Live. What was his name? Narda. Uh, was it John Narda or Narda? Something like that. I love these characters. Hey everybody. What's going on? Hey, how's it going, Keith? What's up, everyone in the chat? Uh, pretty good. Um, just, uh, uh, that, that was nicely done, now with the tribute. That was really nice. No, thank you. I, I appreciate that, man. Um, it's just you know, I, I I had to do something. I'm I'm not sure that JT is going to show today, but I can kind of understand that. Um, you know, I'm I'm really not sure what else to. What else to say but um but th this really cool film and this this is one of his uh it's one of his favorites as, as he was talking about right there so i thought it'd be nice to do that you know kind of kind of you know kind of for him um that, that i know of he's you know he's he's not you know he's, he's still with us at, at at this point from last i heard this is i hadn't heard from jt i, I don't know so um you know um I do believe in miracles. This is Easter. Let's let's just see what happens. But yeah, he 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 is right. Um, Evil Dead Two was was kind of like his his remake because he wasn't able to make it the way he wanted to the first time around. Um, since he had a little bit more money, he he kind of wanted to redo it. I still look at it as the sequel. Um, he goes back to the cabin because kind of the first one didn't happen, or maybe it's a different dimension or different universe. Uh, I mean, I don't know. What, what's your thoughts? I mean, you know, it seems like some people sometimes, like, I mean, I know a lot of people are really big on Evil Dead 2. I like it a lot myself. I still like the first one the best out of any of them. But it just, like, sometimes people, like, that, it seems like that don't like Evil Dead 2. It's like, they're, they're really, it's really hard for them to understand the concept that, all right, he didn't have enough money with the first film. And it's like, when the, the second film came around, he had that chance to, I guess do whatever he wanted, had a bigger budget. He finally got the movie done the way he really wanted to. I understand that. It seems like some people don't sometimes. It's just like, really? Like I think the writing's on the wall. <laughs> yeah. But it's definitely been a minute since I've seen this movie. Like I think like seriously a couple of years. I haven't sat down and watched this in quite a while, so Yeah. But I, I, if I were to rank this franchise, I think it would just go in order. <laughs> really, it would just be one, two, three. <laughs> yeah, uh, my my line's always been the the first one, and then the remake, and then this one, and then the Army of Darkness. Of course, you know I'm not real big on it, but but this one's just got just enough of that horror and just enough of that gore. You know what I mean? Just still enough of that first feeling of of, of the first one. To make it good yeah that the cabin atmosphere in the woods definitely helps big time too i mean it's even like like hearing dave talk about the movie like there's just so much damn blood in it i mean at one point a light bulb gets completely doused in blood and the whole room just turns red <laughs> yeah it was uh 
uh, I'll check it out. And there, there's actually um, a dude named Gary Jones did the hand. So they actually had a specific guy just for the hand. So yeah, it, it um, I I thought um, it was released in um, the 13th of uh, March of '87. I, I thought the box office was a little bigger for this one. The budget was 3.5 million, and since the initial box office is only 5.9, I, I figured it was probably bigger than that. Yeah. Um, I, I watched uh, uh, Sean Clark, an episode of the, um, you know, he does uh, Horrors Hollow Grounds, and he, yeah. he went to the place, and the only thing that was still standing when he went, I'm not sure how long ago it was, but the fireplace was still standing. <laughs> Wow. Hey, I guess so, because it's brick. It's probably like the only thing made out of brick. Yeah, because it burnt down, didn't it? I don't know the whole story on it, honestly. I kind of no. didn't really keep up on that. Like, I think yeah, I, one person stayed in it or something, and they, and they lit a fire or something, and uh, it burnt the place down or some shit. <laughs> so, you know, but um, let's see who got in here we got, 10 in here now. We got um let me start earlier here at the beginning uh hey joseph how you doing do you know what's up uh we had uh jerry what's going on jerry we had a few months here a, a, a few others here a few minutes ago it's not saying nothing now um so sorry if i leave you guys speechless i wasn't trying to do that i was just trying to pay a little bit of respect hey blissful how you doing just, you know, trying to play a little bit of respect. Didn't mean to bring everything down, but, you know, it's just the only thing that I could think of doing, you know. I, just, I have a weird way of going about things. But um, I got all, all my shit set here. Um, if, if JT does show up, we'll bring him in. Um, if not, we'll just go ahead and do it. I got my, um, got my 4K going here. I, I had, um, I have this one. Oh. The groovy collection. Oh, they have the long box. Yeah, the groovy collection too. Oh. I got it when it was only like. Yeah, I, don't, I don't have. Uh, the only, actually, I think the only movie I have on 4K in the franchise, I have Army of Darkness and the remake, the 2013. I don't have one and two on 4K. I got my, uh, got my uh, subtitles going. I, I always use the subtitles just because just I have to turn it down a little bit. But yeah, I, that's I, exactly I, what I do. Uh, I, I put the, uh, the uh, link up here. I'll, I'll go ahead and throw it up in. Now, uh, just a heads up with that link. It seems like for some reason on Look Movie. I don't understand why this is happening, but it seems like older movies will tend to pause throughout the movie as you're watching it. When you're watching newer stuff, you don't really have this issue. Or when I'm watching TV shows on there, I don't have that issue. But it just seems like it's, you know, it's a movie that's, you know, from the 80s. It always just, it never fails. It'll be like 10, 15 minutes into it. Pause. All right, got to hit the button again. And then you know, it's just like after a while that when you keep having to keep doing that, it can be a little annoying, but hopefully that doesn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. With, with newer uploads, it, it doesn't, or even newer films, it, it, it won't do that. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Give it a shot anyway, just in case somebody doesn't have it. And usually the way I fix it is, is I'll back up just a tad and then hit, and then hit it, and then it'll, it'll start going again. So. There you go. But I'll I'll, I'll I'll do a slow five if, if you're ready. Yeah, I'm good. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. Play. But yeah, I, I mean, you could tell that the, that the that the money was a lot more plentiful in this one. Yeah. Let's go, Joseph. I mean, don't, don't quit, man. I just think he, you know, like you could say what you any anyone could say what they want about the first movie. I just think he proved a lot with the first movie, and that like really made people's eyes open up and 
you know, actually listen and everything and be like, you know, I should probably invest in this. That is my favorite easily. E easily is the first one. And the, the remix is great too, though. But that, those are my two favorites. Evil Dead Rise, to me, it kind of falls if, right before Army of Darkness, just because I, I just don't feel like that there, there's, there, there's something missing in, in Evil Dead Rise. You know what I mean? It's missing something. I can't, I'm not sure what it is. Maybe it's the cabin. You know, I don't know. It's Evil Dead Rise is a bit conflicting. I mean, I, 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 I just look at that movie as like I'm, I'm able to get through it from beginning to end. So it's I have to like it in some kind of way. But while I'm watching it too, it's just I don't know. It's hard to swallow an Evil Dead movie in an apartment building. It's just it's out of the woods and oh, I don't know, man. It's it's a tough movie to really give an honest opinion on for me, but I love the opening of it. You know, like when that movie opened up the way it did, I actually kind of forgot there for a minute that we were going to be in a high rise in a, in a few minutes. Like I was like, Oh shit, we're in the woods and everything. We got, you know, we got the, the camera from the, from the evil's point of view flying through and everything. The girl comes out of the water. It was like, Holy shit. Like this is a pretty yeah. epic opening here. And then, to me, as it goes I, along, no, another thing is, I don't really care for most of the characters in Evil Dead Rise. I really don't care for like everybody in that movie. The longer it goes, the less Evil Dead it should seem, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, I have it in my collection. I, I, I got to sit down and watch it again, but it's hard to say if anything's going to change. Take it easy, man. Thanks for stopping by. Hey, get, give me one minute, man. I'll be right back. All right. Hey, what's up, Juno? Got Johnny here from the Wild Guys. What's up, Johnny? Joseph, the horror guy. Uh, Jason, he's got to get out of here. And Daniel Garcia is here, too. What's up, Daniel? Blissful's here, too. What's up, Blissful? And Jerry, what's up, Jerry? Yeah, this is a double header for me. I got a we're doing uh Elm Street too at ten o'clock. Yeah, yeah, I remember you saying that. Uh, you, you you invited me to do that that with you guys. Um, uh. See, I didn't sleep much last night, and it's like starting to catch up with me now. <laughs> it's, I'm like ready for bed now. Well, sure. I, I mean, if you, I mean, if, if you only don't get a little nap for a little bit, man, I, I understand. Nah, man, I'm I'm good. Trust me. If I if I wasn't able to do this, I wouldn't have showed up. You know, and I, mean, I would have told you. Like, I would have texted you and been like, "Dude, I can't do it." Right, hey, Blissful, how you doing? What's going on? Thanks for coming. Sorry, everybody. I didn't mean to start out on on on, on, on such a su su such a low start. I just you know, like I said, I just want to do something. That first snippet that you seen was uh, the very first episode of uh, the round table that I did with him and uh, Night Nightwatch. Uh, as we're still trying to figure out the format for it. You, you, you and JT on later too. Uh, um, no, uh, we were supposed to do Cannibal Holocaust last night, but he, he canceled out on that one. We're supposed to do it later on in the week or something, but no, I haven't, um, no, Joseph, I, I, I haven't seen that one. Guys. No, it's funny how, like, with the first Evil Dead, everything's pretty much established. So the second one, they're able to just jump right into the book. You know what I mean? Like they're able to just jump into that, have some kind of flashback scenes and stuff. 
Well, that first one is so strong, man. That after you see it, I mean, by the time you see this one, you've definitely usually usually seen the first one, so you know what you're jumping into right away. Right. Yeah, you're already like you know things have been established. If you you know if you're a fan of these movies and you obviously if you've seen the first one, but it is kind of funny how it just jumps right in. But you know we know what's going on. By this time, you know they, he had found out during making the first one what he had in his family. You know, and he and this is what he decided to use it at its full advantage. He realized he had a brilliant comedic, you know, a physical comedian. You know what I mean? He, I, and I don't think he realized that until they got about the middle of the making of the first. One. But by this yeah. time, he would utilize that shit. And then the third one, geez, it's just too much with it. <laughs> I, I know a lot of people like it, but I, I, I just don't. I, I mean, know. one thing I know is is from watching the Scream Factory, um, like the features, like the new documentary on it. It really sounds like Sam Raimi was like about to ruin the movie with yeah, like a lot of stupid ideas, and like Bruce Campbell and people had to keep pulling him aside and being like, "Dude, you're fucking up this movie right now. Like, you already got stuff written, and you're coming up with new ideas, and these new ideas are shit." So it's like another reason why, like, I kind of look at Army of Darkness as like, could have been worse. <laughs> I, I mean, I like the movie for what it is, but it could have been worse. Not, not being a big really fan of it, I, I, I haven't seen a lot of those features, so I didn't know that. So yeah, that's crazy thinking he could have made it even, even more off the wall. Like when I was watching that too, I was like, are they joking about this? Like, are they really serious that Sam Raimi was like fucking up this movie? Like willingly like <laughs> as it goes on it's you know like uh what's her name's in it too um patricia tillman is that her name maybe from uh return or from night of the living dead remake yeah she plays maybe. barbara in the, the night of the living dead remake i know she's an army of darkness but she's in you know an evil makeup and everything but her listen to her like you know her stories with uh her experience with army of darkness she was just like dying laughing the whole time talking about it and she, just explaining how funny uh sam raimi is to work with but she was even saying too like you know like there was some times where sam's coming up with some ideas and we're looking at him like what the fuck are you talking about dude like <laughs> pull it back in just a little man yeah yeah, because that's what I missed in it, man. Was um, like the, the the original Evil Dead, and even a couple of times that this one's got a couple of really creepy points, like when they turn and they're doing this shit, and that's yeah. really creepy to me. Or like or like when when his girlfriend is sitting there and she's twirling her hair and giggling and shit, and he's slapping her. And she just <laughs> that's weird, <laughs> man, and that that works, you know. Now I can't remember if there is claim like stop motion in this, but I don't think so. I mean, if there is, it's definitely not as much as the first movie. I'm not quite sure how they did the hand. I, I know uh, Greg Nicotero and, and his team. This was one of their first jobs, you know, by themselves without Romero. Uh. Because some of the first work they did, as far as big time work, was Day of the Dead, and then they, then they, they his team did this. Yeah. So yeah, I, I don't think it's supposed to be a whole other universe or whatever. I I just think that he intended for it to be just a, just a remake of the original. I mean, he's gone on and said before, you know, the first movie is a straightforward horror film. The second one is like a horror comedy. And the third one is like a war horror film. It's, you know, he's he was able to, to tackle other genres besides horror with three movies. And obviously you could tell that he's a big fan of the Three Stooges with all the the oddball jokes and everything and the poking of the eyes and, and all that stuff and the, the the weird little gesture noises that he makes and everything it's it's so reminiscent or i mean there's certain things out of that are, are that are so reminiscent to the three stooges it really shows on screen what was that one scene where you got a, a bunch of little tiny ashes and they're tying him up and shit 
that was done yeah. in Tom and Jerry, man. Remember, it, it was a bunch of little Jerry's or whatever were tying Tom down or some shit. I remember. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Because I know at one point, like, one of them gets, I think he eats one of them or something, and then he drinks that boiling water, and <laughs> then you hear him screaming in his stomach and shit. Poor Tom. <laughs> Joy nuts. Now, they were able to use the same cabin, right? I think so. I don't think they, because it didn't burn down until, what, like 15, 20 years ago. I mean, even the the swing outside looks exactly the same. Yeah. Well, well, the the, the one in the cabin in the woods they they made to look a lot like it too. Yeah. I just I just wish that movie had better CGI in it. Cabin in the woods. Yeah. I love Cabin in the Woods, man. I I, I think it's. Now, to me, that that that's a fun ride. Yeah, I enjoy it, but it's just there's certain things about it that just I don't think are going to help with aging that movie. And it's mostly has to do with the CGI. Cool. Hey, Cal, how you doing, man? Hey, what's up, Cal? Well, now the sun's going down. <laughs> yeah. Fucking dead by dawn. <sighs> yeah, yeah. You also get the uh, the uh, the uh, killer from uh, in Intruder in this one too. Yeah. Now, he looks so different in Intruder compared to this because he has the mustache and in Intruder. He doesn't have any facial hair. His hair is longer in this than it was in, in Intruder. Like, I know the first time I saw Intruder, I wasn't able to tell it was him. He looks so different. Yeah, he's, he's supposed to be like a backwoods hillbilly in this. That's what's funny. It's his, his, his chick is so good looking. But at the same time, she'll fucking spit and fart and puke and all kinds of shit. You know what I mean? It's like a complete... You know, it's, it's it's really strange. Yeah. To see his his, his good looking wife fucking being able to outspit him, you know. <laughs> Bob and Joe, where are you, girl? I always love that when you hear the evil coming and then it pauses and goes to another scene. You don't hear it anymore. And then it goes back. <laughs> it's like wow. Wow, <laughs> he's running through doors and all kinds of shit. He like he didn't even know a couple of those doors were there. And now the the, the evil has, has actually lost him. It's like God damn, where is he? <laughs> Fuck! It's like oh, that's so crazy. Uh, I didn't know Godzilla versus the or G Godzilla X Kong. Times Kong or whatever it was out. What the new one? Yeah. Yeah, I haven't been hearing many good things about it. Yeah. It, like I, I said, as soon as I heard the reviews for that like Godzilla minus one or whatever, I said, man, they they better up their game for that Godzilla Kong movie. Here. It's gonna look bad for, you know, compared to that minus one. And so far, I think that's pretty much the way it's been. I'll be right back. I got to get a new light. Mine's dead. Hey, yeah. Happy holiday, Cal. Happy Easter, everybody. Showing up here, just getting off the plane. This chick, I, I'm, I'm not too sure about this main chick, man. Exactly how good she is. 
Oh, I will. Hey, whatever I know, you guys will know, man. Or JT actually may may be the better one to uh, to um, check up on and check up on his page and stuff about that because he's going to know a lot more. Or he he's going to know a lot more. I will. Yeah, well, um, is it as good as the uh, Godzilla versus Kong? Or Kong versus Godzilla or whatever, the last one they made two or three years ago? It's as good as that one, man. You know, it's at least decent. Oh, uh, she, she's in it again. Is um, Formiga, Formiga, or whatever. It is. Oh, she's not in it. Okay. Can't remember if she lived through that last one or not. All right. Oh, man. TV still doing good? Yeah, yeah. I ended up getting a 43 inch. The brand is a high sense, but it was only $175. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I was telling you, you, you can get them, you can get good sales on them things, man. Like, I'm not, ex like, I, I, I'm aware that this isn't like a great brand, but I just like, I had 300 and I was like, I really don't want to spend $300 on a TV right now. And, I saw the price of this and I was like, fuck it, dude. If I can get a couple years out of this thing. And I mean, so far, everything looks good on it. You know, everything's easy to, was easy to hook up. So why not? Yeah, I'm going to have to get a new one for my bedroom. But like I said, it's like 16 years old. So I, I, I would say it's probably on borrowed time. It still looks real good and everything. But it's one of those things where just one day you go to turn it on or whatever and it just doesn't fun. It's yeah, I don't know what happened with mine though. I just I paused it and I went outside to smoke a cigarette and I came back in and everything was off. And now that usually happens anyway because of the en energy saver thing. If I'm out there for too long, it'll just everything will shut down on its own. And that's what I thought happened. And I'm like, all right, the player's on. I'm like, why is the TV still black? And I'm like, yeah, you know, like I've only had this TV for like maybe ten years. The brand on it, it was a sharp. It was a sharp TV, but I'd never had any issues with that TV since day one. No issues at all until now. But, I mean, another thing is, too, I, I've been wanting to get a bigger TV anyway. And from measuring my old one, apparently the old one I had was a 32, and this is a 43. So it's, you know, I'm, I'm glad I have a bigger TV now. It always happens, though, when you're not ready to spend that kind of money on it. Yeah, it's almost like the same. Actually, that really happened with, like, my LG Region Free player. That thing started fucking up on me. It was working, and then it wasn't. But I did get lucky finding a 4K and Blu-ray player, a Sony, which is, like, is this, apparently it's supposed to be a really good player or whatever from what I read online, but I only paid 300 for it. And from looking it up online, apparently it goes for more than 800 in some sites. So I was like, I think I got a deal on that for 300 But I think for the, the LG, I'm like thinking about that now. I think I paid 150 for that one, the LG region free player. I think I paid 150 for that. But this one is obviously, you know, it's 4K and Blu-ray. It does other shit too. And, yeah, that's what I've always had. For as far as my region free players go, is uh, I've I've had two LGs, 
for a long time now. And like I said, the only thing I, I have to do every now and then is is is, is just clean the beam, clean the clean the eye, and then they're perfect again. Yeah, it's hard to say exactly what was going on with mine because it would read some disc, it wouldn't read some disc. Yep. And then it starts shutting down. Then the disc tray won't fucking close. It closes, then opens right back up again. I'm like, yo, there's just too many problems here. This thing's got to go. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're being and then there's times I go to change the regions. And I'm sitting there pushing the button to change it, and it's not changing. I'm like, this is fucked up, man. Well, um, but um, some so, some of the all region players, you, you got to put the disc in and shut it off. And then push either one or two or whatever, and then it'll come on, and then it'll go to that region. Others, you open up the the um, the door, put the disc in, and then hit one or two, and then it, yeah. that will switch regions. So it just depends. Well, yeah, I noticed when you leave the disc tray open on the LJ, and then you're changing regions, never an issue at that time. But if you close the tray, it's got a mind of its own. Yeah. All right, but. It's, you know, it's like, another thing is like from hearing people out on like YouTube and just like reading reviews online, it seems like that LG is really hit or miss. It either works really good for people or it's nothing but a disaster for people. Yeah, it's, it's worked just fine for me. I, I've just had to clean them, you know, several times. That that just could, that just could be because I smoke around it. You know what I mean? That, yeah. there, that, that is the death of electronics. Yeah, especially players like that because it, you know Nick Dean gets in there and it, it gets on that eye. So hard to even see that fucking eye in there, dude. You gotta take the, um, you gotta dim the light so ultra violet doesn't hit it. Like, um, like go into another room, room truck side, and put a sheet over so the ultra violet doesn't hit it directly. And then you take the top off, and then you gotta open the door, and then you unplug it. You put the uh, Q-tip in uh, some uh, some uh, alcohol, and then you gotta get it in there. You're in, in, and then you gotta clean that eye with it, and then take it out. And it only take a couple seconds to dry. And you put the top back on, plug it in, shut the door, and then you put a disc in that plate. Yeah, yeah it's, it's 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 not easy to get to it. Uh, Ash just chopped up his girlfriend in the fucking tool shed. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we was having a conversation with, with himself, and it's like, "You're all right, you're all right." It's like you can just chop your girlfriend. <laughs> it's not a rule. But some of the physical comedy comedy that he does in this, like we start beating himself in the head with the dishes and shit, flipping himself around, it's just insane. You know, apparently he got that cut on his chin, that iconic scar on his chin from. He was wearing like a piece of like um, like a night suit or something, like a chest protector. It was like all metal, and it came up and hit him in the chin, or like his chin came down on it or something. And it turns out the person that designed it is his wife. <laughs> and like they were like actually they they were actually talking about that in like some of the features. He's like, you know, go figure. The lady I end up marrying is the one that designed this. That gave me this nasty cut on my chin. Like, <laughs> well, that, that's the way it works. Um, quickly, um, she ended up marrying the dude that uh, designed the makeup for her and Night of the Demons and made the uh, made made the false breast. You you know that she stuck the uh, the uh, lipstick in. Yeah, it was her husband that made that. I think his there. name is um, Steve Johnson. Isn't that his name? Yeah, they're. I I don't think they're together now. No. Yeah, they I think were, they divorced a long time ago. They were together for quite a while, but yeah, I can see why he he wanted to get married. I mean, not from the breast part, but just the beginning part, which he's been over in the convenience store would be enough for me. <laughs> To me, that was much more impressive. I mean, if I remember correctly, on the Night of the Demons documentary, he does like mention that he's like, "Well, I first took a notice to her when I was 
doing her torso cast with her breast yeah. and everything. That's when I first started really noticing her. And then we started talking and it's just, everything went right. <laughs> she's, she, she's a really nice person too, man. That, that, that probably helped. You know what I mean? He, he got to know her and was like, damn, this is not only does she got a sweet ass body and she's nice looking, and she's also a sweet person. Yeah, I know she's big on, um, like, I know she's, like, an animal activist. Like, she's, like, all about animal rights and everything. It's, like, a big thing for her. Yeah. Not not, but, not to the point of uh, Linda Blair or anything, of course. But <laughs> yeah. But you know what's she's fucked up, though? Like, the people that are involved with animal activism, they try to look at her work as an actress and being naked on screen. Like, people try to hold that against her. But it's always the only it's only the people that are involved in the animal activism. That's it. It's never anybody else. But those people will get on her shit about that. Yeah. Well, what bothers me about her is is she'll show what well, I've heard she'll she'll get shitty if, if you try to talk to talk to her about the horror movies. But if if you mention animals, she's all about it. It's like, man, you're at a convention to sign autographs for the horror movies you've done, not your animal activism. It's like, come on, get you know. <laughs> I don't give a shit. I don't want to talk about her animal activism. I'm, I'm going to talk about what she did in The Exorcist and fucking Seven mm -hmm. Streets and shit. Not how much she loves doggies. I mean, I love animals so much. The next person, I, I, know, I, um, I, 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 I've got a little, a uh, little chihuahua that I love to death. But if I go to meet her, I want to talk about work she's done. But apparently, that's one of the reasons why Linda Blair really wasn't in the new Exorcist movie, right? Apparently, the there was a role written for her for Believer. She was supposed to be in it, and she was like, "I got too many obligations with dogs and cats and shit. Like, I don't have time for it." So, so, but I mean, at least she's dedicated to that shit. She she made you know she, I guess you could say she drew a line in the sand and said, "This is what I'm doing with the rest of my life, and I'm happy doing this, and nothing's gonna pull me out of it." Right. Just the the I'd say. The the commitment part right there. That's, I think that that's cool to see. It's you know she's committed to something and she's not willing to break free from it. Yeah, she she had her full Hollywood. I think years ago. Yeah, there he is. He looks so different in this man. It's not even like what is. Intruders like three years later after this, I think. Two, well, yeah, just two, two or not three. Not even much longer. He just made up different. Like I say, he's supposed to be a backwoods type, you know, dipshit. Yeah, no. His hair is way longer in this than it is an in intruder. He's like, sure. He doesn't want to make that kind of deal with you. He, he didn't see that trunk in the bug. He didn't see that big ass box trunk in the back of the trunk. <laughs> right. Before you make that deal, make sure what all these are talking about. Don't just look back there and be like, oh, sure. Yeah, have a good night, Joseph. This is where he's smashing all the plates on his head and shit. <laughs> yeah, you walk into this and, and see this place and everything. I don't know, man. It's just maybe we made a mistake. Here, let's turn around. But I mean, you, you would you would assume that you know with what the place looks like and everything, and him being the only one you see here, that he must have done something to your parents. I mean, you know, but. But they'll listen to him for a second. They just fucking beat the shit out of him. <laughs> I love how he makes the hand of person here. Like it has a personality. Yeah. It's pretty much got a mind of its own at this point. The possessed hand, yeah. This makes me wonder how much asbestos is on that floor right now. Quite a bit. 
I mean, I don't know if it is or not, but it looks like there's asbestos on the floor right now. The old plaster yeah. shit, yeah. Because they used for all the old places. And, the, and, and all, all the paint had lead in it. Yeah. <laughs> Who is laughing now? I don't know. You got your own hand off, man. Yeah, he's hacking his hand off now with the chainsaw. Such a wise idea with that, the zoom in on his face like that and having all the blood just squirting all over him. It makes it way more chaotic. Yeah. It also, I feel like the blood squirting on him with the yelling kind of distracts you from the fact that his hand's being cut off right now. Like, you and me would probably want to see his hand getting cut off, you know, as a horror fan. But you're you're being distracted very well by him screaming and having blood just doused all over him. Yeah. This, this is one that I've always said. This one in Army of Darkness is one you don't have to be, like, a heavy horror fan to watch. It. But, like, the first one in the remake, you do. Yeah. Yeah, I see that. Because the, the remake is just straight ahead, up your ass and down your throat, fucking horror. Yeah. I mean, it's just I mean, it's, horror. They wouldn't smile about that. I mean, sometimes it seems like the people that don't like the remake, they usually have like an issue with like the drug use thing and all that. But to me, the reason why I don't mind the drug use thing and the, you know, the, the, the one girl being addicted to drugs or whatever it's so modern, you know, yeah, it's yeah. like when that movie came out and it had that in it, like with the drug use, it's like, yo, this is what's going on in the world right now. Like people are getting high on fucking heroin and fentanyl and shit. Like this is what people do. That and that. And, and I mean, the whole point of the whole point of the, of the whole thing is she's trying to kick it, you know, so yeah. it's like, that has to be in there because that's the story. Well, it's relevant to the whole reason why they went there in the first place. You know, they, they wanted to seclude her in the cabin and be there for her and help her get through it. And obviously, when they're talking about it, it's, you know, there's been another situation where they tried this before somewhere else and it didn't work out. That was the way around happened to have an action. But I think another thing that works with that is when she comes back out of the out of the woods and she's claiming that she sees shit out there and there's something out there and it's a, you know anybody else that's around her is going to be like yo she's hallucinating from the withdrawal right now but in reality no it's more than that <laughs> yeah I, and that's what you would think you know that would that, that would seem much more likely than there actually being something there with them you know you any, anyone would be like look you're all right man you just gotta get through this part you'll be all right you know it, it's just the withdrawals so it makes a lot of sense yeah definitely man i just don't know why people some people can't see that like, i don't know it's i mean generally it seems like a lot of people do like the remake occasionally i hear somebody that doesn't like it, it usually has to do with the drug use and I guess that's understandable, but I just don't understand why people can't see that it actually works. That or they, they, they don't look past past the point that there's no ash. You know what I mean? There's no ash, so it must not be any good. It's like, and that's not true, man. That one doesn't need an ash. It, it doesn't even lend itself to an ash period. I mean, there's no comedy in it. That's for sure. It's a dead serious horror movie. Straight ahead, John, your throat horror, yep. Like, could you imagine if Ash was in it with no comedy? Just dead serious the whole time. I think that would get old pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that he was able to make an Evil Dead movie like that without an Ash is what told me that he could probably do the same in Robin Hood pretty well. Now, I think Cam I think Bruce Campbell just retired recently, too. I don't think he's acting anymore. No, I haven't seen anything in a minute. I think he said something where he was like, my body physically can't do it anymore. Not, not, not for what he, not for what it is he does. Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he officially thinks he's insane now. 
I mean, at this point, he hasn't even talked to another human being in a while, so it's like, what the fuck? All I know is this evil in this cabin. <laughs> you would just lose it, you know? It's just like, the whole cabin's laughing at you. Yeah, I mean, he's like almost at the point where it's like, you know, I can't beat this, so I may as well just laugh along with it. You know? <laughs> as soon as that chair broke and that fucker turned and looked at me and started laughing, oh, man. <laughs> he's a fucking boom. Man. God damn, somebody's shooting at me from inside the cabin. Do you think that they heard all that laughing? Or, or do you think that that was just something that Ash was doing? I think you got to be inside the cabin to hear it. Yeah. So that's why they were they're walking right up there and all of a sudden get shot at. They're like, what the fuck? That, that's why when they go in there and he starts trying to tell them, they're not listening to what he's saying. Yeah, I think, like, if anything, I think they probably heard him laughing. But not, yeah. like, all the shit on the walls. <laughs> So that makes him look really bad. <laughs> this is really, that's what's really sad about it is if they're able to sneak up on him and tackle him down, damn, it's a good thing that fucking the demon wasn't. I wonder what he's thinking right now, though. Like, uh, I thought the shit was in the house. Now it's outside, though. Like, <laughs> It's everywhere. See, this guy's able to just run up on him and tackle him down. If, if that would have been the, one of the demons, if that would have been it. Hey, what's going on, Jim? Happy Easter. Man. Hey, Jim's Movie Channel. What's up, Jim? Yeah, Jim's got some interesting content on his channel, though. He's been doing a lot of videos lately. That's where it's like 50 years of film, and he's going through like all the individual years and stuff. But, you know, he's also like showing off his collection and everything he owns. He's got a lot of good films in his collection. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, you know, he's all covered in blood. Of course, they think he's a lunatic and killed her parents. Yeah. I mean, what else would you, I mean? Oh, God. <laughs> the basement. <laughs> we'll throw him in there. <laughs> Yeah, in that um, Sean Clark thing, man, there, there, there was still a hole from where the, from where the basement was too. You can still see the hole from where they had because they didn't actually shoot. There was just a hole there. There wasn't actually a a, a fruit cellar in the basement. This, this was shot somewhere else. The uh, fruit cellar was. Yeah, but there was a hole where you could come up and have a door there. You know what I mean? Yeah. She got some, she got some buck shot in the shoulder. He's stuck in the basement with God knows what now. Yeah, and you, and you don't really think about that until they start talking about it. Jim, Jim says that it's his favorite of the series. Love all of them, but, but this one is just brutal. A lot of people do, it seems like they do like Evil Dead 2 the most, and... I mean, to me, there's really no wrong one you could pick as your favorite. I'd say, I mean, I like them all, but for me, like, just, I don't know. I just, I know the thing is, like, with the first movie, I just, the first time I saw the, you know, the first Evil Dead, that shit scared the fucking hell out of me, dude. Like, and then it became, you know, like, with my friends, like, if we go to the video store and we couldn't land on something new, it's, why don't we just rent the Evil Dead movies again? We can always rely on them, you know? <laughs> That first one just got something about it, man. 
something about it that's just all. It's so like it's just such a serious horror film, and it's right in, it's just in your face too, man. Right. Talk before and close. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Um, Robert, beside it is Chainsaw Massacre, and then on the other side is a um, is an actual theatrical one sheet of scanner. So like, Wasn't there also a poster for like the Hills Have Eyes that was like ripped in half? Yeah, I don't, that, maybe that was in the first here. one. Yeah, down here in the basement. Yeah, he he did that because of um, the uh, scenes from the original Evil Dead in um, Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, okay. so so basically for this one, he said, "Oh, all right, if you're gonna show scenes from my movie, then, then we'll do a half tour and half poster of uh, Hills Have Eyes um, in, in our movie." So they. they you know, they were kind of sending each other signal. It's like, yep, I got you. Check this out. <laughs> Come to Henrietta. Ah, uh, fucking Henrietta's awake now. Yeah, she is disgusting. Well, you so. Swallow yourself. Swallow yourself. Yeah, yeah. Hey, what's up there, guy? Guy over at Caveman Movies and more. Yeah, what's going on? Damn, yeah, he's got his whole boot in his mouth. Yeah, yeah, I, I got a good deal on, on that scanner poster, Jim, man. I um, found it and um, made sure made sure that it was legit and then um, talked the guy down some, man. Ended up getting it for like 65, 70 bucks. Which is damn good for a, a, an actual theatrical one sheet like that, especially one like Scanner. I got quite a few one sheets now, man. I, uh, a, a few of them I missed out on. I almost had pieces, man. Almost. Got the yeah, I don't have any like one sheet posters. I never like. I mean, I like posters. I just never got into collecting them and getting them framed. And I, I just. The posters you see on my wall are the ones that come with the Blu-rays and shit. <laughs> like, I've never, like, I mean, I, I like posters and the artwork and everything. I just never got into it as a as a thing to collect. Yeah, it's not, it's, uh, to, to get the actual good ones, you definitely can't collect a lot of them, you know, unless you've got, unless you're, like, rolling in money. You're not going to be able to get a lot of them. A lot of them are yeah. really expensive. But I've i I have the burning, um, damn I got quite a few of them actually. Um, Humongous, the burning, um, scanners. Uh, I've got a terror train. I got for like twenty bucks. Um, I've got Rocky two. I I would have to look through them, but I I got quite a few good ones. But like I said, pieces I almost had. From there I've um, oh I got Mother's Day. Yeah, um, I, I would love to get Last House on the left, and um, of course Halloween and shit like that. But when you're talking about Halloween and Jaws and all that, you talk about fucking money. Right. Now the uh, the humongous one you have—that's the one with the crib and the fucking baby creature coming out of it and shit. Because mm -hmm. I just the only reason why I ask is because there is quite a few alternate poster arts for humongous that I've seen. Hey, what's up, Chris? Chris is evening, all you assholes. <laughs> what is what's up, from? Chris? What is that from, man? I don't know. Oh, it could be just from Chris. I don't know. <laughs> that sounds so familiar. I've heard that somewhere. That, that's like mr darkness do you, do you know the youtuber mr darkness or, or mr blackness or, or whatever he, he's like goffed up and shit he, he, he like does this comedy type of thing doesn't ring a bell but he's fucking hilarious man he he had a run in with um, a big youtuber years back and the big youtuber was trying to make fun of him and he ended up ruining that fucking big youtuber's channel Trying to make fun of him and fuck with him, and he picked on the wrong motherfucker. And his big, huge channel went down the toilet. Wow. Well, just, just goes to show, watch who you fuck with. 
Yeah, watch how fucking deep you dig yourself into a hole. Or <laughs> yeah, and he did too, man. And he's, he's gone now. And darkness is still around, so. That's what Ash vs. <laughs> Evil Dead. Uh, I liked Ash vs. Evil Dead. Uh, I, 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 definitely, I definitely liked it a lot more than Army of Darkness. You know what's funny? I have the first two seasons, and I haven't even finished them yet. I still got to get the third one, but I haven't even gotten through the first season yet. I got to go back and like start it over from the beginning again. This has got the um, all three seasons in it. This uh, this Groovy collection does. The only one it doesn't have is Army of Darkness, and I think that's just because Screen Factory has the right. Yeah, it's a Universal movie, and. I don't know. It seems like Universal is kind of particular about what films they license out to people. Yeah. I don't know. It's because, like, I know, like, Scream Factory has released quite a few Universal films, but there's other ones that they probably could have released. And I think Universal probably stepped in and was like, no, we already have plans for that. Like, yeah. Like, Jaws also. Yeah, uh, they never license that out to anybody. You, you can kind of understand them not wanting to fuck around with letting Jaws go anywhere. Yeah. Jaws is just one of them old time films. I mean, he created the blockbuster, summer blockbuster, you know, so. I mean, if it wasn't for Jaws, I don't think I'd be into movies like I am today. It's the first movie that really scared the fucking shit out of me. Still does. Man. And it, it made me want to explore the horror genre. Yeah. It's just because, fuck, I mean, maybe not sure quite that big. But other than that, some shit like that can, can and does happen on a regular basis. But it seems like nowadays it's the cool thing to say, uh, Jaws isn't really that good. Or, you know, I, I don't care for Jaws. That just seems like the, the, the cool trend now. You know, remember when Jaws was cool? Remember when Jaws was a good and cool movie to watch or whatever? Not anymore. Everybody loves shitting on it now. Chris says he, he he likes uh, Evil Dead two more than the first Evil Dead. Not me, man. I I, I still prefer the original. Yeah, I mean, I like it, but like in a way, I like them all equally. But if I had to settle on one, it's the first one. Yeah, that is true, Austin. But do they consider? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's just fuck them. Uh, I consider whatever I like to be cool, you know. Whatever I like is cool enough for me, fucker. Yeah, yeah. Well, Jim, uh, Second Sight has got the Hitcher coming out on 4K in the future. It's probably going to be coming out, prob I'm going to assume, maybe after the summer. But Umbrella, I think it was Umbrella Entertainment or Eureka, one of those. Umbrella or Eureka just released a Blu-ray for the Hitcher. Yeah. yeah but if yeah, you want to get the box set, apparently it's an exclusive to their website. And you can get the standard release just wherever. But... You want that box set? It's exclusive to their website, which is kind of like, what the fuck, man? But at this point, I'm just gonna wait for the 4K from Second Sight. Yeah, they they made a hell of a streak there from their umbrella, dude. Man, they put out a lot of good. And if I remember correctly, I think Near Dark is owned by 20th Century. I'm not sure. Or maybe it's Lion's Gate. I gotta look that up because there used to be a near dark Blu-ray. It went out of print, and unfortunately, it had really bad artwork on it, like to a point where it almost looked like it was related to the Twilight movies. That's how bad the artwork was. 
Yeah, but yeah, it yeah. does. Yeah, it like at this point, it needs an upgrade. It it needs like you know a 4K Blu-ray upgrade, like a full restoration. Yeah. But yeah, I'm definitely waiting on like you know to hear about Near Dark getting released. There's another thing is I only have Near Dark on DVD, and it really doesn't look good at all. Like, there's times I put on that DVD, and I'm like, I don't even feel like watching this because it looks so bad. <laughs> Austin says uh, that Near Dark Blu-ray is and all of that. I, I haven't seen it on Blu-ray yet. Yeah, that's why it needs a new upgrade. Like, bad yeah the artwork was oh my god it looks like a twilight movie so it was a lionsgate blu-ray that's who owns it so i don't know what lionsgate's doing if they i mean i can't confirm if they still have the license but i'm going to assume they do but i guess they're probably just using it as a table coaster at this point Not now, I know there were some uh, media books that come out with, with some, some different covers. Um, so, I, I'm not sure who put that out. Yeah, I want to show you the artwork on this Blu-ray real quick. Like, it really, like, it gives me the vibe. Like, yo, that's a fucking Twilight movie. Like, <laughs> I, I think I've seen it where, where, where it's got their two faces and they're kind of looking up and shit. Yeah, it's just the coloring of it. They they almost look like sparkly fucking vampires. But here it is. Yeah, yeah. That, that, it looks that, like that a Twilight movie cool. or something. Like it just looks awkward. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I I they want eighty dollars. I know it's out of print, but they want eighty dollars for that thing, and it's like a mediocre fucking Blu-ray. <laughs> Eighty dollars, go get fucked. They decided not not to go on with the with the full tree assault here in this one. <laughs> That's another thing that's missing from Evil Dead Rise. You know, obviously it's not out in the woods and you just, you don't have the woods really attacking, but you have, I know there's like, um, like cable wires and stuff that come out and attack people, which is like, all right, that's how we're going to replace that. But it's just not the same, you know? I, I I miss just about all of those those umbrellas that, that they released, man. I wanted to get the audition. I wanted to get the bully. I haven't got any of those yet. I see them way behind. Yeah, I mean, you can order them online, but they are still like kind of tough to get a hold of, especially like the box sets, the limited ones. You don't jump on them right away, then the price rises. Yeah, and umbrellas expensive anyway. They can be a little pricey, but I mean, I think I got lucky finding the possession 4K. I found this for fucking twenty five dollars. Now they want seventy for it. So twenty five compared to seventy, but it is a numbered edition. I think there's uh twenty five hundred. I got number seven twenty. So it, it's a numbered edition, but when I saw that price drop down to twenty five, I was like, yeah, I'm jumping on that right now. But now it's right up to 70, which probably means it's probably like halfway sold out with the 2,500 number that it has. Yeah. But Umbrella, I think, is really another company. Like, you know, they, they do a real, like overall a very flawless job with their stuff. Yeah. So, so the second site, I, I really found yeah. anything on the second site that I didn't like too. I just through. like you know like I really had no complaints with Second Sight. I just wish on some releases like the features could be a little bit more plentiful. Sometimes the features the features are very thin, but other than that, it's really nothing to 
have complaints about you know it's like all right at least there's something there you know because like besides that they do a really good job with like the material on their their box sets the artwork's usually pretty nice and it's for me it's always all about the transfer So now they're analyzing the fucking loose pages from the Book of the Dead or the Necro Necron uh, Necron Necronomicon. Why can't I fucking say that? He said, "Why in the hell do we want to do that?" <laughs> Here's this fucking idiot. We're gonna go look for Bobby Joe. Bobby Joe. <laughs> Bobby Joe. Where are you, girl? Man, he's only worried about Bobby Joe. He ain't trying to hear anything he's saying about all that evil shit. <laughs> yeah. He's just, yeah, he's just, he's just a fucking dipshit fucker. And can you imagine how hot it is with all that light coming out of the cabin right now? Those spotlights, it's probably hot as fuck in there, dude. <laughs> yeah. He could barely walk around at this point. Somehow this I know. He just, it he just hit him in the back of the head with the butt end of the rifle and... Like, leave him alone, man. He's been through it. The guy's missing a hand, for Christ's sakes. Like, <laughs> yeah. he, he, he's got a damn good second and third wind, though. He's, he's tough. Man, he knows that shit's about to go down with these trees now. New new uh, vinegar syndrome releases tomorrow. What's that? Uh, Chris was saying something about we got new vinegar syndrome releases tomorrow. Yeah, I just I don't know, man. Lately, I just haven't been impressed with a lot of titles they're coming out with. Like when Black Friday came around this year and they announced their surprise titles, it was like, okay, like David Cronenberg's existence, like, or existence, whatever you want to call it. Like, that's a big deal. Wow. April announcements. Do you know if they're coming out with uh, any, any more of those um, those comics like, like, like they did with Zombie and Maniac Grid? Because they're supposed to be coming out with um, uh, the Gates of Hell and all of them, too. I've seen some other comics on their site, like, you know, with newly done illustrations or whatever. I just haven't really paid much attention to it, but I did see some other stuff besides Zombie. Zombie and Maniac were, were, were the two that I remember seeing. But, I mean, like, even though, like, I'm not really impressed with, like, the titles that they've been announcing, I still think it's pretty cool that they dig up a lot of these forgotten horror films, you know? It's just, that are, like, just literally forgotten from people, and nobody wants to spend the money to revive these movies and restore them. And it's just them really willing to do that. So I think that's cool. It's just, I can't be spending $30 on movies that are going to sit on my shelf and never be watched again. Yeah. You're a maniac too, huh? I, I've, I've got the full box of uh, Zombie and Maniac. Uh, I'm just waiting for the... Uh, waiting to see what other ones that, that they whip out. 
like I said, uh, I, I include the house by the cemetery and uh, maybe the gates of hell, uh, street of the dead. I'm not sure. You know, that weapon that she's holding right there, like, we don't see that again after this movie, right? Like, we don't see that in Army of Darkness. No, I think it's the only one. Or it's like, it looks like it's like, I don't know, it looks like a spinal cord with like a skull on the end or something. Yeah. Well, he's got yeah. skull. <laughs> She doesn't yeah. even care. Screech, man. It just eats right through your brain. Fuck, man. I mean, you know, when Ash is, like, possessed, man, it really does look fucking crazy as shit, man. <laughs> With the white eyes and everything, and see his eyes are all sunken, and his teeth are sticking out like a, like a, I don't know, like a redneck, I guess. <laughs> Do that fucking screech, man. Just eat right through your brain. Just make her stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you do, don't make her do And she comes, she landed right down on it and stabbed right into it. Oh, stop helping me. <laughs> Don't help me. Ah, leave it alone. Oh, fuck. You can see that thing's rubber. <laughs> yeah, like please don't please don't help me. <laughs> Shut up. Stop Shut fucking up. bitching about the pain. Shut up. We were digitally removed the wire from the flying eyeball. Yeah. There goes him. <laughs> Can't forget about Henrietta in the fucking basement. Damn, look at all that blood coming out of that basement. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. That's fucking great. She can take a health beam, too. She walks right in the evil ash. Yeah. This 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 would be great in uh, 3D. I haven't really thought about that before, Chris, but yeah. But I do like how, like, you know, like the situation we're in here, It's it almost seems like she's really going to be on her own for the rest of the movie, and it looks like Ash is really not going to be coming back. <laughs> you know, it looks like he's going to be possessed for, like, the rest of the movie, possibly. I mean, we all know that's not the outcome, but, you know, it's just, just thinking about that right now. Yeah, it's the uh, sentimental shit that always brings him back. 
Yeah, he just found his girlfriend's necklace. <laughs> Got random chairs sticking in the window to block shit out. Just. <laughs> Uh, your motherfucker, I don't think so. Like, you can't blame her, though, you know? Like, <laughs> what she just went through with him. I think I'd be swinging that axe at him, too, man. He's, I'm all right. He's got this crazy ass look on his face. Are you listening to me? I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm all right. I said I was all right. I was that look. I don't know. At least a minute. Tell me, take me over again. It's not a bad question. Yeah, maybe you are all right, but for how long? Ted Raymond, yeah. That's a cool line. Let's head down to that cellar and carve ourselves a witch. Yeah. Uh, this is where he's going to make the uh, extension piece so he can fit the uh, the chainsaw onto his wrist. Yeah. He's, he's quite uh, quite resourceful. Yeah. I mean, this is like one of the most iconic scenes here, too. You know, he gets his chainsaw, he saws off the shotgun, and the groovy line comes out. Yeah, Ash, Ash would have made one hell of an engineer. Yeah, if he didn't get stuck in the damn woods with all this evil shit. It's better work because sawing that thing in half, you're not going to be able to chain it up down there anymore. Yeah. I just think Ash is at the point where he's, you know, he's, he knows he's got to face all this shit. He can't keep running from it. We told him earlier, we are going to, you know mean we, you're the curious one. Looks everywhere but underneath the steps. I think we're coming up on the final act here. Yep. Which the steps have been the first place I had to look. Like before I start sticking my feet down them, start going down them, I would expect uh, I would have checked it out. Yeah, maybe try to find a flashlight. Yeah. All right, so we got like 14 minutes left, it looks like. <laughs> I 
for me, this part down here, the, the way this looks right here when he pulls back that cover, reminds me of that one part in the uh, basement of uh, your neck. The way that, that sheet's there and you got to pull it back, it was the same way in your neck. It, it just kind of looks like it. Isn't that like when the bulb gets blown out too, I think? She has yeah. like an axe in her hand or something. Like, I See, I haven't seen your necks in a while though. I'm kind of fuzzy on it right now. I just remember it's like a whole scheme going on with family members trying to get like insurance money or something. They're, they're paying people to knock off their parents or shit like that. Yeah. yeah it's a good one. So now he, he tossed all those up and they all, they all stayed together. <laughs> yeah, they did. did they? <laughs> Perfectly. Not one sheet got out of there. It, yeah. I mean, maybe because it was wet, but I don't know. It's uh, movie I, magic for you, man. Movie magic. That must be the logic they're going by is uh, they were wet. So. But still, I still don't think they would have stayed together quite like that. Man, you know, Ashka, he really gets his ass whooped in this movie. Yeah. He just got thrown through the staircase in the basement. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, that screech, man, kind of puts me in mind of an adult version of uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, screech by the kid. Uh, um, God, what's her fucking name in uh, Aliens? Newt. Oh my God, that fucking kid screech, man. Oh, Newt. Oh. Yeah, she has she has a high pitched scream, which is probably another reason why she got the job. Yeah, but God, man, it's just too much. That's, that's the only thing that I don't like about that that film is that kid squeal. It's never really bothered me much. It doesn't happen often. <laughs> oh, it's like Henrietta's neck just grew about 15 feet. Swallow the stars. Swallow the stars. Henrietta's a dinosaur now. Oh, give me a headbutt. Bam, bam. I don't know why Ash is having so much trouble cutting this thing's head off, though. So th there's obviously still a little, little something of her mom in there. Oh, there goes an arm. There goes another arm. There goes a head. You know, I think if it was the other way around and Ash was singing that lullaby, it wouldn't have worked. No. The only air comes out of it like a fucking balloon. <laughs> Swallow this. Uh, Keith, how does this look on 4K, though? Good, good. Yeah. Like, I still have the 25th anniversary Blu-ray, this one. Yeah. Like, it's, it looks good. It's not bad. There's some areas where, like, like I'm noticing, and sometimes it seems like it'll be, like, slightly out of focus to where it's, like, kind of fuzzy, and then it clears up. Yeah. I've, I, I haven't ever really seen a bad transfer of being used up. So. Yeah. But I don't think that's like the studio's fault or like any flaw in the transfer. I just think like there were there's some scenes that just they weren't clearly in focus and that kind of shows on the screen a bit. 
But, you know, shit like that kind of gives a movie character, though. Yeah. Especially horror movies. Yeah, now the fucking the cabin's coming down now. <laughs> yeah, it's head all at once of these two. Instantly, the hair turns green. Fuck. Yeah, that's just at his wit's end now. He's got fucking gray hair and shit coming out of the side of his head. <laughs> Look at this giant. That's, that, that's been the thing because remember, uh, Nancy, the same thing happened in Nightmare on Elm Street. Supposedly, if you get a fright too bad, that's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> That's that. That's always been the the myth, anyway. Or like, you remember the movie The Great Outdoors when that one guy gets struck by lightning and then he has like a white spike down his head. Yeah. <laughs> so it's either you get like so scared that your hair turns white, or you got hit by his ball of lightning or something. <laughs> yeah, a anything really traumatic, just all of a sudden like that. <laughs> Also, um, poltergeist. It happens in poltergeist with the mother too. Like at the very end, there she's got like a white streak coming out the side of her head. Joe Beth Williams. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, it's not like very obvious. You see it when they're moving, when they're getting ready to move all the furniture out. Like she's staying outside. It's sunny outside. You see that white streak through the side of her head. Yeah, I think uh, her daughter or her husband, one of the two, said. Uh, it looks, looks good on you. You know, it's like, hey, it looks like your hair. Yeah. I, I yeah. Kind of good. yeah, I think the mother says, or she says something like, yeah, oh, you think it looks punk? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But the vortex is open now. Sucking all I the to the past. I think those effects for that vortex still hold up. Yeah, yeah, they do. Well, oh, there goes the door. How do you stop it? <laughs> you don't. You don't. You don't. <laughs> you just don't. <laughs> That's it. For God's sake, how do you stop it? The, the old professor calls it. There he uh, the goes. Going through, time, going through time, yeah. Through the vortex and into medieval times. Wow. This fucking car, man. Of course, the car went through the vortex. It's he who has come from the sky to deliver us. <laughs> Yeah. Slay the beast. Just did I. <laughs> he stands up and definitely earns his dinner here. 
Hey, what's up, Russell? Hey, what's going on, Russell? <laughs> Back to the castle. Oh. They're all mesmerized by a shotgun. Come from the sky to deliver us. Hail! Hail! Yeah. Come from the sky to deliver us from the terror of the deadites. Hail! No, no. <laughs> I don't blame him. No, no. Now I know uh, Ted Raimi. He's an army of darkness, and when like when Ash is like trying to recruit people to you know the the, the fight against the deadites, like I, I think Ted Raimi like comes out of nowhere and he's like, "And you can count on my steel." <laughs> he's got like the accent and everything. Like nobody wants to step up and like fight with Ash, and finally he steps up. And he's like, "You can count on my steel." Uh, that is Evil Dead so man. Yeah. Yeah, dead by dead. Appreciate you. appreciate you joining me, man. Um, like I said, um, I was kind of sort of not expecting JT to show up anyway. You know, he, he's got, you know, I, 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 I kind of understand. You know, he, he may have passed out. He, he's, he's had a rough few days. So it's That's what I'm thinking because, you know, we, we haven't really heard from him. So I'm thinking he probably – Hasn't been sleeping right lately, and he probably just crashed out, you know? Yeah, Shit, yeah, I have something like that. But, um, all right, man, I'll let you go and we'll let you get ready for your thing. Um, thanks again, and I will uh, talk to you later, man. All right, cool. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Keith, and uh, I'll stay in touch with you. All right, take it easy. Yeah, take care, bro. <laughs> Because I am Gorophobe, and you are not.